Good afternoon, good evening students. I hope you're doing good. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're back with another lecture concerning linguistics for first year students. As you can see, it will be about Saussure's dichotomies. Uh, last lecture we dealt with structuralism. And next lecture, uh, which will be the last concerning this module of linguistics for first year students, um, it will be about the American structuralism. Anyways, we have four dichotomies to discuss today. We are going to try to explain and discuss them one by one. And as usual, I invite you to like the Facebook page of this channel um, in order to be notified whenever I post something new, of course, and also subscribe to the channel. That would uh, encourage me to do more and also help you out during the period of exams. With that being said, we shall start with uh, Saussure's dichotomies. The first dichotomy to talk about is long versus parole. Okay, so Saussure divides langage into two aspects, long and parole. So langage first is the natural ability of all human beings to use and produce language. Long, on the other hand, is the abstract system shaped by all the speakers of the same language. So it is social. When you say uh, langage is only the ability of all human beings, it means to use the language that they have acquired and also produce it. So, when it comes to long, is an abstract system shaped by all the speakers of the same language, which means we all, for example, if we belong to the same community, we all speak the same language. This is long. But parole is the real or the concrete production of language by an individual, which means we have a person and another one, they might share the same uh, language, but they realize that they produce this language differently. So parole is not really reliable because each human being realizes his or her own language differently. So this is a difference between long and power. Long is situated in the mind. It is fixed. We have the same, it's a system. Whereas power, it is the realization or the production of language by an individual. And of course, it is different from an individual to another. And of course, like I said, Saussure considers long as the primary concern of linguistics. This is as far as the first dichotomy is concerned. Second one is, or the second dichotomy, is signifier versus signified. So, in order to make this simple, signifier is the acoustic image. The signified is a concept. Anyways, to exemplify, if we have, for example, the word book, when you say book, it is, let's say, uh, it is related to parole, it is a realization of language, book. So, when you hear it, okay, when you hear it, it's called the acoustic image. You hear something, you hear the realiz realization of the word. And when you relate it to something that you already know, it is the concept. This is the signified. The signifier is the, the actual realization of the word and how the receiver uh, hears it. And signified is what it means, it's the meaning, what does it represent to you. So when I say book, this is the acoustic image. But the fact that you understand it's an object that we use in order to read, to get knowledge. So this is actually the signified and it is a concept. So Saussure defines all, let's say, um, defines the linguistic science in general as a combination between the signifier and signified. These two things cannot be separated. The linguistic sign does not relate a word and an object. Okay, we do not say a word and an, and, a, and an object. I only explained it that way in order to understand. But it relates an acoustic image and a concept. This is very important. And of course, these, uh, or let's say, the signifier and the signified are abstract. And the relationship between the signifier and the signified is arbitrary, which means uh, the fact that we say book and it represents something that we know, it, it represents a specific object or it represents, um, let's say, a concept, doesn't mean 
there is a relationship between what we hear, which is book, and the actual meaning. It is arbitrary. It's not natural. Okay? Or, um, I mean, uh, if it's not natural, it must be conventional. So, let's say a group of linguists are going to agree that this object, which is the book as we know it, are going to be named book. So, all society is going to talk about the object as book. So, this is the arbitrariness. So we, uh, it is uh, also a characteristic of human uh, language. This is as far as um, the second dichotomy is concerned. The third one is synchronic and diachronic uh, dichotomies. So, synchronic is to study language in one specific period. Diachronic, on the other hand, is to study the development uh, of language or languages through time. Saussure rejected the diachronic study of language, of course, uh, or in other words, the historical development of language through time. But he suggested that the synchronic study of language uh, would be more important. Uh, in other words, of course, to study language in a specific period of time. So this is as far as synchronic and diachronic uh, dichotomy is concerned. Last dichotomy is syntagmatic and paradigmatic relations. If we give an example, you are going to understand. We have I buy a car or I bought a car. So the syntagmatic relation or the syntagmatic, syntagmatic relations are or is the relation of difference between one unit and another that belong to the same sentence. Look, I bought a car. There is a relationship between the subject, that is, I, the verb or the predicate, that is, bought, and, uh, let's say, the article, and the noun after it, that is, the, uh, the object, car. I bought what? It's an object. So, there is a specific relationship between these, uh, let's say, uh, units in a sentence, and this relationship is called syntagmatic relationship. Uh, and it represents the linear aspect of language. Uh, on the other hand, we have paradigmatic, and it is the uh, it is a relation of difference between a unit which is present in a sentence and all the other units belonging to the same category present in the brain. This is a difference. It represents the associative aspect of language. In other words, when we speak about syntagmatic, we are speaking about the units that are seen on the same sentence. But paradigmatic relation is uh, or relationship is uh, the fact that there is a relationship or there is uh, a relation of difference between the unit that is present in a sentence and all the other units belonging to the same category, which means if we say I bought a car, let's take the word I or the personal uh, pronoun pronoun. I. So I here plays the role of uh, a subject, for example. We can change the word I with other words, such as you, such as he, such as the boy, such as uh, the man. So all these, all these are different than I, but they belong to the same category, for example, subjects that can be used in a sentence. And this is why uh, you can do the same thing with the predicates or the verbs. I bought a car. You can you can go to the, the verb bought and you look uh, in your brain, for example. You take a look metaphorically. You'll see all the words that can that, that can replace the verb bought. For example, I destroyed a car. I um I borrowed a car, for example. So this is about syntagmatic and paradigmatic relations, and I hope I made it clear for you today. Uh, it's a short video for a short lecture, of course. Um, if you have any kind of question, feel free to ask them in the comments below. Otherwise, contact me on the Facebook page of this channel, and I'll answer as soon as I see your message. Otherwise, I tell you, see you in the next video. Peace.